Okay. All right, we're back. Now, I uh, I do realize that I would normally have done a Dungeons & Dragons Dungeon Master Guide on a different different topic to the Lost Mine of Fandelver. And uh, actually, I, I, I just had the decide, decision that I would actually do, do this topic. I don't know why. Sometimes it feels like it's the right time. And in this case, it really did feel like the right time. So that's why I'm doing it as of today. All right. I'm just going to just flick that over. Check my sound. I'm just going to change some things over. Wow, I got a thumbs down and I haven't even done anything yet. Now, I, uh, I do realize that some of you might think that I am late, but uh, I just needed to get a few things organized. Okay. Right. Hi, Brandon. How's it going? Hello, Fred. Long time. How are you? I'm, I'm doing all right, mate. It's, uh, it's a good day. It's a good day. Anyway, so I will get on with the, the show. Now, if you're re-watching this video, you'll find the uh, start time is down in the description. So if you're re-watching it, the start time will be down there. If you want to want to go and watch it, that's not a problem. Now, normally what I do with my live streams is I present everything first. And then once I've presented everything, I then open it up for questions and answers. And that is going to be the same format for today. So make sure you have some questions. How long will this presentation take? I have about four pages. That's a lot of material. Um, we'll see how we go. So it could take, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes maybe. Um, I could be shorter. Who knows? But there is also quite a lot of slides as well. So oh, you will get to see my face, by the way. Okay, so I'm going to get started. Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Wheeler, and today I want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons. And specifically, I want to talk about Dungeons & Dragons 5e, that's the Dungeons & Dragons 5e starter set. And we're talking about the Lost Mine of Fandelver. This is a Dungeon Master's Guide. So if you're a player, you should not be here. Um, I know your Dungeon Master would be unhappy if you showed up to have a look at what was in this content. So I would suggest go and do something else. There are plenty of other videos that I have made that you can go and watch. This is specifically for a Dungeon Master. And the topic for today is the Red Brand Ruffians. Now I have uh, called them bandits, I have called them other things. Uh, a particular word, G-A-N-G, -G, I will not use because uh, YouTube doesn't seem to like that particular name. So we won't use that name for this video. But essentially that's what they are. The Red Brand Ruffians are bandits who control the town of Fandolin. And you can check out a lot of information on them on pages 14 and 15 and 19 and 20. And there's a lot of detail on the Red Brands and the Lost Mine of Fandelver. And you're welcome to go and check that out if you want. It does require piecing a little bit of information together, so you will have to spend a little bit of time taking maybe a few notes. Now the bandits have, for the last two months, extorted and bullied everyone in the town of Fandolin. Uh, they are currently led by a mysterious figure called Glass Staff. And I've had many, many requests to do a video on Glass Staff. Eventually it will happen, but it's not going to happen today, for those of you who were hoping that would be the case. So what do they spend their time doing? Well, most of the red brands spend uh, the majority of their time in Fandolin doing the following things. Collecting protection money from the townsfolk who have businesses, terrorising the local population, getting drunk in the sleeping giant tavern or tap house, hanging around the ruins of Tresadar Manor, which is essentially just a castle um, overlooking the town on a low um, hillside surrounded by uh, woods or forest, and occasionally murdering or disposing of villages in the small town of uh, Fandolin. These are the things they get up to. Sounds terrible, doesn't it? Now the player's characters will eventually have to deal with these red brands, uh, unless of course the, the PCs seek out the red brands, and then essentially at this point the dungeon master, um, you know, and you know if they don't seek out the red brands, then the dungeon master can really choose when they show up. That's the the whole setup for this particular part of the adventure. There are a, a, a couple of key characters within the adventure 
who have big issues with the red brands. Uh, first off is Agrista, who is the owner of the sleeping giant uh, Tap House, and she, she hates them. I've already done a video on that particular topic, so I'm not going to go over it um, anymore here. There are two other key characters that I would say sort of stand out for me that really sort of have a lot of vested interest in the red brands. And the next one would have to be uh, Halia Thornton of the Miners Exchange. And she wants to con take control of the red brands. Uh, she's got uh, dark, dark in intentions. Essentially, um, when you could say grey, but I would say it's dark. Now, I haven't covered that particular character yet, but I will be in the future. And then lastly, we have uh, Linen Greywind. Uh, I think that's Linen, Linen Greywind of the Lion Shield Costa Trading Post. And she essentially refuses to do business with any of the red brands. And she knows that bandits of some kind are raiding uh, her caravans who are, that are trying to bring in stock. So she would have sus suspicions that the red brands are involved. Uh, they aren't so much involved nowadays. It's the, actually the Cragmore um, uh, tribe. But she doesn't know that. And so therefore she just doesn't have anything to do with them. She won't uh, buy or sell anything from them whatsoever. Not that they really buy anything. Um, they might try to sell something, but they generally wouldn't be trying to buy anything. The adventurers will have to confront the red brands eventually, and this can happen in a few different ways. Uh, you can have an NPC or non-player character in the town ask for help or explain that the red brand gang or bandits, should we say, red brand bandits, are a problem, and they would certainly appreciate it if they were to deal with them. Uh, the characters can confront or confront the red brand uh, ruffians in or outside of the sleeping giant tap house. Uh, they could also just uh, confront them in the middle of the street. There's lots of different ways of sort of dealing with that. They, are, they, they do have a, a decent presence in the town itself. Another choice is that the characters could try to go and investigate the area around Tresendor uh, Manor. I think I've got that right. Tresendor, Tresendar, Tresendar, it might be Tresendar Manor, and find the Red Brand hideout. Now, the Red Brand hideout isn't actually above ground, it's below ground because most of the manor has actually fallen apart over the years, and all that's left is sort of the cellar area, um, which has been converted into a a hideout or a, a headquarters, a stronghold for the gang. Bandits, sorry, bandits. Uh, if the, the player's characters show no interest whatsoever in the red brands and decide to sort of just leave them, which I know some, some dungeon masters will experience, then the DM or dungeon master can have the, uh, the bandits pick a fight with the characters anywhere they like. It could be in the street, it could be in any location within Phandalin doesn't have to be in the uh, the sleeping giant tap house. Now what happens if they get captured, uh, which is entirely possible, you know, maybe they do actually sort of bite off more than they can chew and they get captured. Well the red brands aren't necessarily going to dispose of them um, or kill them. They might capture them and I would suggest as a dungeon master that's a good option. So uh, certainly leave that in your, uh, in your hat as a, an option if you need to. Uh, they might very well take them back to be interrogated by glass staff. Now what happens if the player's characters manage to get the drop on the red brands and they wind up either killing or capturing? Now if they capture uh, the red brands it gets a little bit more complicated. Killing them is not going to be so much of an issue but capturing more, more of a problem and that is because the Harbin Wester, the town master, won't want to keep the Red Brands prisoner until the entire uh, bandits um, group has been defeated or dealt with uh, by the um, players, uh, particularly if the players' characters don't decide to actually kill the thugs. Now he can be persuaded by intimidation and persuasion, uh, provided that the players' characters can actually prove that they can deal with the situation swiftly before anything else can go haywire, which it quite it's possible it could actually take place. Given the right circumstances and the right type of dungeon master, things can get a bit hairy from here on out. But this section of the adventure is really designed for 
level two characters. And what you'll find is a lot of the content for the Red Brand Hideout is actually stacked in their favor. So it's actually not difficult to deal with the leader if they need to. Okay, what happens if they capture a Red Brand? What do the captured Red Brand bandits know? Well, they have a leader, so they would know that their leader of the Red Brands is a human wizard called Glass Staff, who showed up about two months ago. And it hasn't been that long. Uh, glass Staff's name is based on his magical glass staff that he carries around. Uh, the Red Brands don't actually know his real name, and uh, they do know that Glass Staff's chamber, or chambers, there's actually two of them, are in the western end of the hideout. So if they're looking for uh, Glass Staff, that's where they will find him. The Red Brands also have some, have some captives near the old crypts guarded by skeletons. Now these are individuals that were thought to be not so much uh, captured but killed. Uh, not all of them have been disposed of in a, a dark and sinister place and put into a, a horrible hole to, uh, to pass on. Uh, what about the mysterious black spider? If the player's characters ask any of the red brands about the black spider, all they can say is that he is a mysterious figure who uh, hired the red brands to fight off or frighten off um, adventurers and take control of Phandalin. They don't actually know what the reason is. It's an unknown reason as far as they're concerned. And they don't really care because it's been quite fun and their um, the group of uh, bandits has been doing quite nicely um, as a result of this particular uh, partnership. Okay, now Glass Staff and the Black Spider showed up at about the same time. So if they ask questions about when they appeared or when they started to have an influence in Fandolin, they can say that about two months ago is kind of when they know about uh, Glass Staff and the Black Spider. Uh, currently, uh, the Black Spider has sent uh, a group of bugbears to reinforce the Red Brands, which really hasn't been necessary, but they still sent them anyway. I guess assuming that the Red Brands were incapable of dealing with all the problems that might occur in the township themselves. Now the Red Brands original leader, now this is off page. For those of you who are wondering what is going on Fred, and you're talking about the Red Brands original leader. Now the original leader is not spelled out here. In fact, it's sort of suggested that the Red Brands are just a collection of bandits who were pulled together into a, a group uh, to make sort of um, to make a, a group or party uh, G A N G to cause trouble in the location. But I feel like that doesn't make an awful lot of sense, and so I am presenting you with a different option. You decide if you want to pick it up or not. The Red Brand's original leader, I'm going to say, is Lex Redbrand. Now, it's quite common for the leader of any um, outlaw group to call the group based off their surname. It's part of history, right? Uh, he was defeated by Glass Staff about two months ago, and he still works for the, uh, the outlaws, but he's been seriously injured and, from the fight that took place with Glass Staff, and and he now works sort of as an underling for um, Glass Staff. He was the original leader, Lex uh, Redbrand. Now, this is a maybe. You don't have to take this. You could decide, well, this is not really what I want, Fred. I don't need that sort of background information. I don't need that level of um, detail. But I know a lot of people are kind of curious as to where the Red Brands came from. So I am presenting this as information they would know and pass on to your players' characters if they ask. Okay, so how do we play the Red Brands? Now, I've talked a little bit about what the Red Brands have done with some of the NPCs in Fandolin uh, through some of my other videos, but we'll go over quickly sort of what we can pull out from the very limited information in the adventure and what I could come up with myself and a little bit of information from the internet. So this is what I'm going to say. The Red Brands, they all wear, wear like a, a red cloak. It kind of brings me back to Wyatt Earp and the Cowboys who re used to wear like a, a red bandana um, and uh, this sort of distinguished them from each other. 
Now it's quite interesting that this particular adventure has pulled heavily from that idea. It's a cloak, it's not a, it's not a scarf, it's a cloak, it's red, and the cowboys were red. I feel like those people, Chris Perkins and a whole bunch of people, probably watched a lot of old westerns and have pulled information directly from that. So my advice to you, if you really want to figure out how to play the red brands, go and watch some old um, Wyatt Earp cowboy westerns. That's my advice to you. The red brands have a, a magic cast on their cloaks uh, that allows glass staff to hear and see what the bandits do. Now, this is just my own creation. It's not actually spelled out in the adventure whatsoever. So why would something like this be necessary? Well, one, because Glass Staff would not trust anybody, uh, even those he has pulled together to work for him. And this is also going to make sure he doesn't have to worry about a rebellion of some kind within his own group. You're dealing with people who are lawbreakers who don't follow the same moral code as everybody else. So it makes an awful lot of sense that he would have somebody or something able to do that, which is why they all wear these red cloaks, so that uh, glass staff can keep a track of what they're up to, what they see, what they hear, um, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Okay, now the red brands don't actually like glass staff. In fact, they are mostly afraid of the wizard. Uh, the gang is made up of uh, human males and females, plus a few halflings. Now, just because the red brands don't particularly like glass staff and are afraid of the wizard, doesn't mean that they are going to revolt or that they would necessarily be willing to negotiate with the player's characters to um, turn coat. Uh, and I'll explain to you why, because like all things, everything is complicated with a, a, a group of bandits, right? Particularly those who like to sort of get up to trouble. The red brands have never been more powerful or wealthy or successful than they have been under the leadership of Glass Staff, which is why they're not going to overthrow him. They might not like him, but they're not going to try to um, have a, uh, a rebellion within the, the, the bandits themselves. Uh, this particular gang is full of members who tend to insult, bait pretty much everybody that they come across, particularly if they consider them weaker. Uh, most of the bandits are big talkers, uh, arrogant. They're going to be threatening people constantly. I would suggest playing out, as I said, the red brands like the old Western outlaw gangs. Uh, some of the red brand members could have family in Fandolin uh, to add a lot of a lot more complexity to the game if you want to and your adventure. Uh, the real big question with the Red Brands is that how were they formed? Did Iano Albrick, who is Glass Staff, assemble the group from a collection of outlaws who were scattered in the area? Or did um, Glass Staff or Iano Albrick uh, pull these members from an existing um, bandit group that already existed? which is what I would suggest you put forward rather than what is suggested in the adventure. I feel like that would make a lot more sense rather than um, a bunch of outlaws have been sort of uh, pulled together by Iano and formed into some sort of uh, bandit outlaw group. Okay, so that's pretty much everything I have on the red brands. I know it's not necessarily a huge amount, but if you found this video helpful or informative, please share and like the video. Consider subscribing to my channel if you found this information useful and helpful in some way. Uh, also hit the bell button to be notified when I go live, when I publish new videos. And also make sure to check the settings on your YouTube um, account, because if you don't, you may not be reachable and subscribing and hitting the bell button might not be enough to get informed when I do a live stream. Now, if you want to support my channel, you did so by watching this video. Thank you very much. I do appreciate it. Hopefully it presented you with the information that you want. I have hundreds more videos for players and dungeon masters, but I do have a series on the Lost Mine of Fandelva. Have a look in my playlists. You will find there are many, many, many videos on this topic, and you're welcome to go and check them out, and I'm sure there'll be something there that can help you in some way. Now, I don't do Patreon, but I do have affiliate links down in the description where if you want to support the channel, you buy something online from uh, Amazon or the Book Depository. I get a small commission. Uh, you pay exactly the same price. You know the story. 
story. That helps me just keep things running and keep my equipment up to date. Now, this is your opportunity to ask questions, give feedback, give your experiences of how the Red Brands played out in your adventure. I have seen some very, very interesting videos um, uh, on YouTube, one in particular that really sort of put a different bent or twist on the Red Brands, and I recommend doing a bit of a Google search for that one. Now, you can also just say hi. If you're not part of the live stream and the live chat, then use the comment section. That's what YouTube put it there for, so might as well use it. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s. Okay, um, I'm not gone. It may seem like it, but I'm not gone. Okay, I'm just pulling over to uh, the camera so you can see me. And yep, there we go. And I'll go check the live chat and we'll go from there. Now, there is a topic that I didn't discuss in this video, which I suppose I'm going to say very, very quickly. Um, and that's Gundren Rockseeker. What do the red brands know about Gundren Rockseeker? And I would say that they probably know no more than any other of the townsfolk. Uh, the rationale behind that is there's nothing in the adventure that really spells out or suggests that they would know anything more. And Nesna the Black Spider keeps all of his sort of um, the cogs of, of his organization unaware of some of the details. So that doesn't mean that uh, they wouldn't know anything, but I don't believe that um, the Red Brands in general would know very much about the location of Cragmore Castle, uh, where Gundren Rockseeker is, or what has happened to the Gundren Rockseeker um, or the Rockseeker brothers. Uh, so that's just my view for anybody who, who was wanting to ask that particular question. I know another question that will probably time jump out, and that is the, the rogue pre-generated character sheet, this thing here, which has a background, uh, which is a tie-in for the rogue character into the red brands and like who Fred who's the who's the member who betrayed the rogue uh, when he was or he or she was part of the red brands that's really up to you as the dungeon master and um, your player to figure out there's nothing spelled out because it's supposed to be open-ended it is supposed to be unsure you can make that up as you go it may never ever um, be fulfilled it might be that uh, your rogue character if they're using the pre-generated character never actually finds out who betrayed them within the red brands so just saying for those of you who were ready to ask that question okay let's go to the top top of the uh, chat box Brandon is here hi Joe how's it going uh, it has it been a long time Joe it doesn't feel like it I feel like it wasn't that long ago at all actually okay let's work our way through this placebo this is perfect just started running this adventure with my eight-year-old and some friends okay good placebo I have a whole bunch of videos on the lost mine of Fandelva there's a big playlist go check them out um, some of them are the edited versions and some are the hot full live stream but they have the same title just look at the titles and decide on which one you have time for okay Nathaniel how's it going uh, test. I'm not sure what that means, but okay, you came through loud and clear. Uh, Charles. Hi, Charles. So does Glass Stuff get anything from the Black Spider, or did he just need the encouragement? Um, I think it's more the support. Um, I don't really want to discuss Glass Stuff in detail. I know, Charles, that does not help you, because I feel like I've been working towards Glass Stuff, Glass Staff is a really complicated character. And for me to be able to pull that all apart, there's nothing in the adventure, as you know, that sort of suggests that there is anything other than a mutual relationship of cooperation taking place between um, the Black Spider and Glass Staff. So um, I don't want to go into that because I feel like it's a lot of speculation and you can do that yourself. Uh, what's this? Trustful. Trustful Nerf said. Is it Nerf said? Just missed. Uh, don't worry. It's all right. It's not going to go. I mean, it's going to get published by YouTube and you'll be able to rewatch it. Not a problem. So don't worry about that. 
Uh, but if there are questions you want to ask, fire away and we'll see if I haven't already answered those questions. Um, try this for a vid anyways. Okay, I'm not sure what that means, but okay, cool, cool. Uh, right, Nathaniel, what have we got here? If um, I play it, I play, I play it that the town master hired the Red Brand mercenary group to defend the town from the nearby or nearby threats. Uh, they were always rowdy and caused some trouble. Okay, well you could. I mean, the Red Brands could have been simply um, hired by the um, town master and it didn't work out uh, the way he, he had hoped. And instead, Glassstaff steps in, takes control and winds up running the town, essentially. Um, I think it's a good idea, Nathaniel. I think that's actually very, very good feedback. Placebo, great video. I have a lot of good ideas for Red Brands for next week. Good. That's excellent. Okay, what do you got here? Um, just give me a second while I just position myself just a little bit better in the camera. I'm trying to read the notes. If you can see me turning my head, it's because I kind of have to, otherwise I can't see anything. Okay, what else we got here? Um... Uh, placebo, going to make the mayor of the town have a nephew who was recruited by the Red Brands uh, that he, that you need to bring back for some gold maybe. Well, yeah, suppose you could. Um, I think that certainly adds a lot more complexity to the story. Now that's fine if you are feeling confident enough to add more complexity to an existing adventure, which is actually quite complicated as it is, um, that's fine. Uh, okay, hi Chris. Are the Red Brands third level rogues? No, no they're not. Um, they are exactly what the back of the book actually says they are. They, <laughs> they, they have their own stat block. I know somebody was going to ask me about combat um, stuff with regard to the Red Brands. It's on page 61 and it says Red Brand Ruffian. And it basically they get multi-attack, they get two attacks... It's all of a short sword. I would play them out like a bandit. Um, my suggestion to you is I have a video on monster tactics called bandits. If you Google that or jump onto YouTube and search that, you'll find the video and that will go over how to play a bandit. It, the problem with bandits is they play, they can play in so many different ways. They can play, their, their main goal and motivation is money. Money and power. But money is always good, right? Money and power. Uh, they are only a half challenge rating. So that means they are designed for... Four of them are designed roughly for a group of four or five players. Um, and you won't really get groups of more than four of the red brands at any given time. So that's sort of how it's been laid out. So the so that you don't wind up making it too difficult for your players. Because they, remember, by, by now when they get to Fandolin and they're dealing with the Red Brands, they might very well be level 2. They might not have gone to Cragmore Castle. They might not have got through that section, uh, which means they would quite possibly be level 2 when they get back from Cragmore Castle. But if they didn't go to Cragmore Castle, which they might well it might have happened, they're more likely to be level 2. Level 2, level 3. Um, this situation isn't designed to be hugely difficult. Remember, this is not the big baddie. Glass Staff is actually designed to be rolled over, if you haven't figured it out. Uh, Persham, what's my, what's up? How's it going, Persham? Okay, Nathaniel, what have we got here? Uh, they didn't get really bad un until Glass Staff showed up. Only Halia, Halia knows of Glass Staff due to her faction. She pretends to be nice. They aren't Bad men, glass staff is the issue. Please only take him out. Yeah, well, her rationale is she only wants... Halia only wants uh, glass staff taken out because she wants to take control of the red brands. That's her rationale. She just wants glass staff out of the way. Um, I, think, I think in the adventure itself, it does actually sort of say that the townsfolk know that Glass Staff is the leader of the Red Brands. So if if it's not clear, it should be clear that um, the Red Brand leadership is Glass Staff. They don't know that Glass Staff is Iano Albrick. That's the only thing that is sort of left out. 
Um, it's only one sentence. It's in a, I, don't, I couldn't even pull you up the location and show it to you right now and tell you exactly where it is because I can't remember. But I do remember reading there's just one sentence that's, that basically states that the townsfolk know that the leader of the Red Brands is Glassstaff. They just don't know who he is. Um, Nathaniel, please do not kill any of the Red Brand. I, I believe they aren't truly bad and can be reformed. Well, why not? Um, Sector Black, how's it going, Sector Black? Wizard, how's it going? Okay, Nathaniel, what have we got here? I just need a drink of water, sorry. <clears throat> now, I'm probably not doing another one of these um, Lost Mon of Fandelva Dungeon Master Guides next week. So ask your questions now, uh, because um, this is a good time to do it, right? <laughs> Nathaniel, even after Glassstaff is killed... Halia puts on a good show and even offers up her own money to re rehabilitate the Red Brands, but secretly she is the leader. Is the leader? Hmm. She was. She has plans to put them for them once the PCs are gone. Well, I think that's exactly right. Um, I think you're on the right track. I don't want to talk too much about that character because I still have to do a video on the topic. But yes, Nathaniel, all good stuff. Um, Sildar wants them prop prop properly organized into a militia. Halia loves this and she gets her spies into the organization. Yeah, I don't feel, I mean, that's how you're running in your game that way. But I feel that Sildar Hallwinter would be more likely to want to bring them to justice. And that justice would mean having them escorted back to Neverwinter to um, stand trial. Because that would make a lot more sense. Um, or even to some of the other locations, such as Water, Waterdeep, uh, another place where they could be held accountable. But Neverwinter, I think, is probably more likely to have more uh, punch or impact. Hi Chris, how's it going? Thanks for covering this. My group is just about to start this part of the story. Glass staff background would be helpful. I know it would be, but as, as I said, I've, I'm slowly working my way up to Glass staff. What you've got in the adventure is enough. Um, and, and to be fair, the chances are you will never get to use a lot of the information um, in the book on Glass Staff because the chances are the players will just dispose of him, which is what happened in my group. And I've heard the same thing told in many, many advent uh, um, parties, any, many Dungeons and Dragons groups. The story is we took out Glass Staff first and then just worked our way through the hideout. And we didn't keep him alive, we just killed him. And that's it. Dear Jesus, yes you are late, but that's alright. Sorry, I think I you meant Cragmore Hideout. Did I say Cragmore Hideout? No, no, I was talking about the Red Brand Hideout. Um, Cragmore Castle, I talked about Cragmore Castle, but not um, Cragmore Hideout. That's, that's the goblins. We're talking about the Red Brand Hideout. Different location. Uh, Nathaniel, great pointers. Okay, I'm glad you like the advice. If it works for you, good. Uh, Sector Black, do you ever use skill challenges, Fred? Yeah, I do. Why have I not done any videos on skill challenges? Um, because... It's a series of videos that I have been working on for some time, Sector Black. Um, which is why you haven't seen any videos on skill challenges. I think what you've got to understand is I plan a lot of my stuff months and months in advance. Because I do so much content and because I'm not full time, this is just a hobby for me. I have a full time job. A lot of the material that I create is in parts and pieces and then I have to pull it all together and um, often what I will do is I will pick a topic that I feel like I have time to work with and sort of I'm interested in doing right this very second so there's a whole lot of stuff on skill challenges yet to come um, and I just haven't put them out because skill challenges are they're really good for action scenes. I dislike them for social interactions or social encounters. Uh, I dislike them as a way of doing research. I feel like it's inappropriate. 
um, and I don't like a skill challenge that's too long. I've done that. I, I've done skill challenges. I've had whole sessions that were just a skill challenge. Now it can be done, but it only works if you know what you're doing and the players are still having fun. So you need to know when to sort of say, I've, that's it, we're done. Um, and also too, to, to, to turn a, your, your whole um, session into a skill challenge, which you shouldn't do, but I have done, uh, you, you really need to have set up a, a story behind why it's necessary to do that. Um, so that, the, 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 that whole skill challenge idea is coming. I don't suggest using skill challenges in the Lost Mine of Fandelver. And my rationale is there's nowhere in this adventure where I feel like it's appropriate. If that makes sense. But Sector Black, yes. And I will eventually do videos on them. Um, I do have topics that I talk about regarding skill challenges. I just have to work my way through it and find a time when I feel like it's the time right time to speak about it. Okay. Uh, dear Jesus, not sure if you covered it, but uh, be prepared if a PC decides to interrogate a red brand. Yes, I did actually. I ran into this very, very soon. Yeah, okay. I ran into this very, very soon. Yeah, look, I did t discuss, I did talk about uh, what the red brands would know. Um, there's a whole section. There's actually a, a box in the adventure. Uh, where is it? So a lot of the detail that I have presented is actually already spelled out on page 20 where it says what the red brands know. It's in a box. It's there. Okay, I have only added a small amount of additional information, which is basically stuff I made up. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, what else we got here? Uh, dear Jesus, you mentioned that level two um, PCs will have a issue with red brands after Cragmore Castle earlier. No, no, no. If if you if you to be fair, if the players' characters or the PCs do Cragmore Hideout first, they should be fine. If they go to Cragmore Castle after that they will find it very difficult because it's it's not a location that um, you can sort of uh, jump in and out easily. That's just just what I found. Anyway, so um, just bear that in mind. Uh, but if they go from Cragmore Hideout to the Red Brand Hideout, that's much easier because that whole section is built for level two characters. And that's not going to be a problem. It's if they jump... Um, from uh, the Cragmore Hideout to Cragmore Castle, because I feel like that's more set up to be level three characters. Um, the only time they might struggle with the red brands is if they don't find the the secret entrance to um, the red brand hideout, which I find unlikely, given that there's so much. The NPCs are set up. Um, the the back door is easily accessible. The secret door is a set ajar, all that sort of thing. So it shouldn't be difficult for them to deal with. Um, I'm not. Did I say something like that? I thought I didn't say that. I, maybe I got confused. Who knows? Okay, sector black. Cool. I gotcha. I will look forward to that. I really like the idea of them, but I'm having trouble getting them right. Yes, I understand. Deploying a skill challenge and getting them right is difficult. I'm planning to deploy one soon. A homebrew escaping a sinking temple on a lake. Okay, my advice to you. Three stages. Three separate skill checks for the skill challenge. And uh, if not everybody is involved in having to perform the skill challenge, then it's a waste of time. It's really just a collection of skill checks. A skill challenge works best when the entire group have to participate. That's my advice to you right now. I will get back to skill challenges some other day. Um, Matthew Colville did a really good video on skill challenges, and I you probably already watched it, uh, but I would go and check that out. But I, when I do my videos, I'm not going to just talk about it. I'm going to give you actual examples that you can use. Okay, <laughs> all right. Um, okay, what else we got here? Da, da, da. Um, oh, Brent. How's it going, Brent? Hi. 
Hey Fred, keeping up, keep up the good work, homie. <laughs> um, also, I watched your video called My Dungeon Master Journey. Yeah, that's a, That was a long time ago. Um, my Dungeon Master Journey has moved quite a lot further than that. Um, yeah, I don't know if you got something out of it. It was really more, that particular video was really to sort of set up that I had changed the way I had done things. Uh, to explain that just because I started out doing something a particular way, and I think this is the case for many Dungeon Masters, we do change what we do. Um, and I have been slowly working my way through that content, trying to explain myself. Okay, Nathaniel, as the players um, deliver the provisions to Barthen, uh, Silda, leaves, um, Silda leaves to go see the, the mayor. Yep, the red brand show up and shoulder bump the beefiest player. Oh, you mean character. Uh, they then extort Barthen, who gives up his um, provisions. Hmm, interesting. Well, that makes a lot of sense, because the Red Brands have been uh, pretty much collecting protection money from everybody. Uh, even even those who, who dislike them still are paying protection money. Aiden, how's it going? Hello. Dear Jesus, also prepare if they take the red brand along to lead them to the hideout. Ah, yes. Yeah, look, I think you would find that the red brands would probably try to let their their people know if they are being led into the hideout. Um, it's not going to go well for them. I imagine one of the player's characters is going to deal with them harshly. Um, okay, Brent, what do you got here? Heavy content um, video. And I have been down the same road. Yes, it is a heavy content video. Exactly. Yeah. A dungeon master's journey is always a tough one sometimes. I think actually always a tough one. Um, it's probably why there are so few people who do it. Okay, right. What else we got here? Uh, Nathaniel. Cragmore Castle can easily total party kill the group. Yes, it absolutely can. Um, and I will explain that when I am ready, um, which means I will, I'm, I'm building up to laying out a map of the whole location populated with monsters and creatures and so forth to illustrate that point. Um, probably very much like the, uh, the Goblin Arrows video, where I sort of show you what can take place with the Goblin Arrows. Although that wasn't the worst case scenario. If I had played out the worst case scenario, it would have been much worse um, than what you saw in that particular video. Anyway, let's move on from Goblin Arrows. Um, dear Jesus, exactly. So just make sure people don't get the, the wrong ideas. Yeah. Uh, all right, Nathaniel. Um, I, freaking love, I freaking love when the players negotiate with the, the Norfolk. Oh, really? The guide says that the Norfolk has a deal with the Red Brand. I always roleplay the Norfolk and let them promise to bring cows. Because the Norfolk would eat cows. Why not? Look, if they are willing to... Look, if your players are willing to have their characters talk rather than fight, go with it. If it doesn't make sense for that particular NPC, um, then don't do it. And I, I know a lot of people feel like they have to roll dice to determine the outcome of a social interaction. Um, well, you don't. If, if the motivation, if they can't appeal to the motivation of an NPC or work with them or have enough to hold over their head, uh, then it's not going to work. Uh, but, you know, play it out. If it doesn't have to be a combat, great. Uh, Nathaniel, protection money, not provisions. They are oh, right, protection money, not provisions. Okay, I got it. Understood now. Jared, hi, how's it going, Jared? Uh, what have we got here? Um, I just yesterday had a player find out about the red brands muscling the town and promptly headed to the sleeping giant and set it, to, <laughs> set it on fire. Well, it doesn't surprise me. I've heard that story many, many times. Um... <laughs> I have discussed that in the video I did on Grista and the Sleeping Giant Tavern. Uh, <laughs> so yes, Jared, I, I know what you're talking about. It is often a topic that comes up. The solution to all things is fire. <laughs> okay, Chris, what do you got here? 
more a comment. Uh, thanks for the, okay, all right, Chris. Um, thanks for the good vid ideas. Did not realize that the bandits were a were a monster, not a, a human NPC character class. No, well, yeah, they they are human, but they are still classified as a monster. They're not built to be a character class. Remember, it's only the characters that are uh, playing character classes. Um, not any of the nothing in the adventure is built to be that powerful. Um, a player's character class is significantly more powerful than the monsters that they are fa facing uh, in terms of their power output. I will look up your uh, bandit video. Um, thanks, still trying to understand the D&D world. Well, Dungeons and Dragons world is complicated, so I totally understand, which is why I do these videos and why I do them live. Okay, Nathaniel, um, I need another drink. Almost losing it. <clears throat> Pardon me, sorry about that. Okay, Nathaniel. The one thing I think Lost Mine of Fandalva lacks is puzzles. No, it's it's deliberate. The, re the reason being because it's designed for new players and puzzles will, will uh, grind the adventure to a complete halt. You have to have the right sort of people at your table. Uh, just because they are nerds does not mean they like puzzles. Uh, I found that out the hard way when I was running uh, the Tomb of Horrors. So my suggestion to you is, unless your players really, really like puzzles, don't add them. Um, so it's not it's not a mistake. Uh, you can add puzzles to this adventure if you wanted to, but I wouldn't do it unless your players really like that sort of thing and they're good at it. I make uh, glass staffs chest a riddle riddle lock at the foot of the bed. Okay and add puzzles into Cragmore Castle too. Well, fine. Look, if you like puzzles, and your players like puzzles, then add puzzles. Look, this, you can change lots of stuff in the Lost Mine of Fandalva, and you should, uh, particularly if you feel comfortable doing it. Okay. Um, another. <clears throat> I'm going to lose my voice very shortly. Okay, Charles. My party was mostly um, hack and slash, but I described the Northic so creepy they uh, tried to talk out of fear. Okay, so the conversation was because they didn't want to get hurt. Okay, I get it. They're extremely um, visually disturbed. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> All right, okay, so that covers every question that I have, and there's a lot of people in this room. Look, um, I'm going to head off. I'm going to go and do other things. So what's happening tomorrow? Tomorrow is my painting day. So I'm painting tomorrow. You're welcome to come and ask me questions. Uh, doesn't matter where you're, whether you are a player or a dungeon master. I'll talk about anything while I'm painting my miniature. Uh, about the same time, Nathaniel's retracting all his um, statements. I don't know why you need, you don't think you really needed to. Uh, but anyway, um, that's fine. If you need to do that, that's fine. Um, thanks again, man. Have a great night. Uh, long time listener. First time in chat. Okay, really? First time? I've watched literally all of your videos. Oh my gosh, there's so many. I don't know how you could get through them all. And not all of them are that great. Ugly Weirdo. Hi, how's it going? i got to go anyway, okay? Um, so if you need to chat with me, uh, do that tomorrow in the, the live chat while I'm painting. That's my day off. Anyway, so have a, a good night, a good morning, good afternoon, a good day. Look after your family and look after yourself. And when you get a chance, go and see the Avengers Endgame movie because, blimey, was it cool. It was very fun. I watched that last night. I'll see you later.